Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the last minute farming you should be doing for brave weapons before they become much harder to get. If you didn't know, once Final Shape drops, Bungie is going to be removing the Golden Border weapons from the possibility of brave weapons, and they are also going to be moving these into the strike playlist, I believe is what they said. Obviously, this is going to leave the loot pool a lot more crowded, it's going to be harder to run the activity to get it, and it's just going to be more annoying overall. So I highly recommend farming these up now, while you still have the increased chances and the increased gold border chances this week specifically. Also, don't forget that the final shape is going to be dropping next reset on Tuesday. However, they are going to have a downtime for 25 hours before that time. So there's going to be downtime starting an hour before reset on Monday. And one last quick thing, I'm going to be streaming on YouTube when the final shape drops, and... If you do want to be notified of that, either subscribe or you can join my Discord server and you can pick up a role to be notified with a Discord ping whenever I go live or make videos. My Discord server is in the description, it's got a link there and I just made it and it's super active right now so I highly recommend you guys all join. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into the video. So we're going to start off with the obvious, and this is Edge Transit. This is probably the biggest weapon, or the most hyped weapon from the Brave Arsenal as a whole. It's one of the best DPS weapons in the game right now, and it actually currently has the best burst DPS of any legendary weapon in the entire game right now. So it's got a lot of things going for it, but let's go ahead and dig into the roles you should actually be going for. So I made a video specifically on Edge Transit not long ago, however they have since released some nerfs for Deconstruct, so my take on that is going to change quite a bit, and we're also going to talk about the possibility of the double perks for those who might get it. But we'll start off with the single perk options because I know that that's realistic for more people. So you pretty much want to have Bait and Switch no matter what now. Bait and Switch is by far the best fourth column perk on this thing for DPS, and then you've got two options for your third column. You could choose between either Cascade Point or Envious Assassin. And the main difference between these is that Envious Assassin makes it easier to maintain your DPS. With the grenade launcher, you don't need any reloads, you can just dump everything all at once. Whereas Cascade Point is going to allow you to do your damage much faster, however it requires you to augment it with some instant reloads like Rain of Fire or Grapple Reloads. If you're like me, you should get both, however otherwise, those are pretty much the purposes that both of the roles serve, and you can kind of choose which one you want to prioritize more, and which one you want to keep. Now on top of that, because we still have access to the double perk gold weapons, you could also get a weapon with bait and switch in the fourth column, and then have access to both Envious and Cascade Point in the third column. And this does still allow you to switch from Envious Assassin after you've built it up to Cascade Point and maintain its magazine. Bungie did heavily allude that they planned on changing this, however there's been no official confirmation, and no mention of it at all in any TWABs. There's not really a lot else to do right now in the current state of the game, so this is really a good thing to grind for anyway, just in case it does end up being a big deal for the Final Shape raid. They don't really have a long time to nerf it at this point, and there's a good chance it's going to be a part of the Final Shape raid race. So after Edge Transit, the number two weapon I would say is by far the Mountaintop. And some people might disagree with me on this and say that it's kind of overrated, but we're going to talk about why it is such a powerful weapon. So the first thing about Mountaintop is just that it's extremely versatile. It's able to do very good major clearing, it's able to be used as an effective DPS rotation weapon, and it's also an extremely powerful movement tool. And this is all wrapped up into a special weapon that is not an exotic. If you are going to be going after this weapon, I highly recommend getting actually two different roles, basically one of them for your general use and your utility, and sort of your major bursting, and that's going to be Overflow mixed with Recombination. I know a lot of people are going for auto-loading holster and recombination, and that's also a great perk too, however I would use that more for DPS rotations and use the overflow one for general content. Remember that once Final Shape drops, we're going to be able to enhance the perks on these weapons, which means that overflow is going to give us 3 grenades in the tube every time you pick up an ammo brick. And it's really not hard to produce guaranteed ammo bricks constantly with stuff like special ammo finisher, cenotaph, aeons, and obviously ammo finder mods. That being said, when you are using the Mountaintop as a DPS rotation weapon, it's really hard to be auto-loading holster, and then you basically need to decide whether Recombination or Warple slash Frenzy is the better damage perk for you. And the way to decide this is pretty much if you're going to be shooting less than, I believe, 6 grenades or somewhere in that figure, you want to be using Recombination because the initial shot is just worth more value. However, if you're going to be shooting 7 or more, I recommend using Vorpal as the total amount of damage starts to increase as you shoot more shots with Vorpal, versus with recombination. Then there's one more role I would go to purely for utility, this is going to be your least used role by far, and that is pretty much just impulse amplifier and sticky grenades. This is so you can do the sticky stacking movement tech, 
This is another thing that I have a video on if you are interested. I covered the movement tech you could do with Mountaintop once it released. Basically, this involves using sticky grenades and just shooting the floor repeatedly until you have five of them stacked up. That's as many as you can take before you'll die using the new version. And then you time a jump so that when they all explode at the same time, they launch you really, really far because that's kind of what the Mountaintop does is it has a ton of self knockback. I also think it's worth noting that as long as you don't infuse this weapon up to 2000, which is going to be the new light level cap in final shape, you'll likely be able to handle more than five shots because you can't currently get a Mountaintop at under 1800 power. That's probably enough about Mountaintop now, it's definitely a great weapon as well, and I highly recommend it for anybody who hasn't tried it so far. It's better than you probably think it is. So moving on, these are now what I would consider to be lower priority weapons. Pretty much every other weapon other than Mountaintop and Edge Transit are completely replaceable with something in realistic use cases. That being said, one thing I recommend if you do want to just cover all your bases with everything is to pick up an Eager Edge version of the Falling Guillotine. There's a couple of perks you could go in the third column, but you basically just want to increase your utility as much as possible. There is a pretty low chance that this is going to be better than the Slammer. However, the main reason you would use this is just if you wanted to have a Void Sword. For example, if you're using a Void Special Weapon, you could match your Scavenger mods on it, and that's just, you know, convenient for general content. My role that I have on it is Eager Edge mixed with Chain Reaction, which is kind of decent because sometimes I will use the Eager Edge sword to clear out some ads if I haven't reloaded my weapons or I'm out of abilities or something like that. This is totally subjective, but remember that Vortex Frame swords are going to be the better Eager Edge swords when it comes to doing skating, either using Well Skating or Shatter Skating or any of the funny edge skating tech. They do have a longer reach than the adaptive frames, and they are going to be enhanceable once Final Shape drops, which will just make them better in every way. The only actual downside they really have is if you do the skate movement too slowly, you'll eat up your ammo. However, it is completely avoidable by just being able to put the inputs in quickly. And lastly, these are just weapons if you're not able to or don't want to farm the other sources for equal weapons. And mainly these are going to be the Hammerhead and the Five Barons. So we'll start off with the Five Barons, which is basically just the next iteration of the Four Barons. It's very similar to the old version. It has the exact same god roll of Ambitious and Chain Reaction. That being said, it does have access to Demolitionist, and it has a different origin trait, which can give you back ability energy. So it's sort of up to you if this is worth farming for another one, or if you don't have access to regular Forbearance, I definitely recommend getting this, as it is pretty much the best Ag Clear Legendary in the entire game. And Hammerhead, similar to Forbearance, is basically the same weapon as the Commemoration, available from the Deepstone Crypt. Commemoration does have access to Reconstruction, which the Hammerhead does not. However, they both have access to 4th times the Charm, which I think is a great perk in combination with what is by far the best damage perk, Killing Tally. It is worth noting that this weapon is able to get double damage perks, however, I don't recommend doing that because machine guns have extremely punishing reloads. And I also want to remind everybody that machine guns as a whole are not super good right now, but occasionally you do have a reason to pull one out, so if you don't have a good machine gun, a hammerhead is definitely one that's able to get good perks. Anyway, that's pretty much going to do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed and you learned something new, and I hope to see you in the next one, and see you guys in the final shape. Bye bye